This video is for teachers who are looking for a meaningful, easy, ready to assign set of activities for the rest of the school year. Hi, I'm Lauren Sinclair and I am a middle school teacher in Portland, Oregon. And um, we started quarantine a little bit early compared to a lot of people I know, um, mid-March of 2020, if you're looking, looking at this at in the future. future. And um, because of that, I've had a couple of weeks to try out some activities with my students and find out some things that are really effective. So I wanted to share those with you. If you are a teacher and you are willing to try a new technology, don't hang up that only requires a computer and an internet connection, I think this is one of the most powerful set of activities you can give your students to do right now that will help them engage with the COVID crisis. Sisters, brothers, and my non-conforming teachers, my goal for you is to give you something that you can simply assign to your students and then they teach themselves the rest while you sip a cuppa a cup of whatever you want because no one's at your house to check. Ha ha. If that sounds good to you, keep listening because I can walk you through the whole thing in two minutes. Ready, set, go. Maybe you, like me, believe that our students in middle and high school really want to engage with the COVID crisis. I had a hunch that that was true so I created a series of activities that helped my students dig into how this and other pandemics have started, how they spread, and then how we as humans try to attack them. The feedback I got back from my students was overwhelmingly positive. So I want to share these activities with you. What did we study? Mapsplaining. Have you ever heard of mapsplaining? Well, I have because I created that phrase. We started by looking at these COVID maps that I'm sure you've seen by now. They have these dashboards that light up with different size circles to show the number of cases in different areas. It's broken down by country. You can see the changes over time, lots of statistics. Then we dug into the top 10 deadliest epidemics and started studying what they had in common. We started with things like the Black Plague, cholera, the flu epidemic of 1918, and since I'm a technology teacher, we looked at a lot of digital maps to help highlight the patterns and relationships in each of these epidemics. I gave my students the resources to teach themselves. Emphasis on they teach themselves. It wasn't about me. It was about them using the resources to teach themselves. Hold up, wait a minute, why do I have that? Because I was listening to Bruno Mars. I've done this for a while now in my classes, but seeing how this worked with remote teaching made me realize, yeah, they don't really need my help. It's really that simple. And that encouraged me that any kid anywhere with a computer and internet can do the same activities themselves. But wait, this brings me to the most important part of this learning path. We're all in a difficult place right now. Some of us are under stay at home orders. Some of our students are taking care of younger siblings at home because their parents are essential workers. Teachers, all the teachers I know, are exhausted by learning how to teach remotely, yet we're grateful to have our jobs. Times are scary. I feel it. You feel it. Our kids absolutely feel it. But you know what feels better? Being able to do something about it. And that's not a feeling that students usually get. But through this learning path, students actually have the power and the tools to be able to contribute in a very meaningful way. After the first few activities that students do on these digital maps, they now have the skills to contribute to maps that are used by NGOs, governments, organizations like the Red Cross to actually find real people in developing countries and areas that are under mapped. Using satellite imagery, your students can help put people on the map so that these organizations will actually go find them and give them the aid that they need. My students have been emphatic that this is the most valuable thing they've done while in quarantine. If that's not enough to convince you to give these activities a try, I don't know what is. But okay, you're probably wondering, how am I supposed to grade all of this? At the end of this whole learning path, your students will be introduced to a tool called Story Maps. And I am convinced it is like the axe that is going to kill the zombie that is PowerPoint. 
it's a tool that basically takes the potential of PowerPoint to the next level and gives the students a platform to put all the maps they've made, all the analysis that they've done into one place. They can then use that as a tool to share what they've learned with their communities, or you can grade it. And then Jimmy's dad can stop emailing you about his A. That's it. If this sounds good for you, click the links below to learn more or just assign this learning path to your students and learn along with them. It is really that easy. Thank you.